to the Talking Wolves podcast. I am your host, Matt Cooper, and today we're joined alongside Dave as a party. Dave, how are you, mate? I'm very well, mate. A little bit tired, but uh, yeah, keep it well. Well, what have you been up to? That's my day off, and you know, when you do nothing on your day off, and you're just like, I'm tired, but you just are. I had, to be honest, I had a little afternoon siesta as well, so <laughs> yeah, I love your life. Yeah, yeah I, I can't nap in the day. It makes me feel shit. I don't yeah, know. That, that's probably why I feel shit, to be fair, yeah. so... Saying that, I fell asleep on the sofa last night after a Sunday dinner. My word. Uh, <laughs> work, 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 come up for air for a bit of cheesecake and then went back to sleep. <laughs> it's fantastic. We're also joined by Jord. Jord, how are you keeping, mate? I'm good, mate. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. It's always, uh, it's always a little bit easier after a win, isn't it? I know after the uh, the Liverpool game, you said, well, we want to do a podcast. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, that's it's because I was stuck on the bloody M6 by bloody Stoke on Trent. It took about an hour and 40 minutes to go about two, about two mile or something. Went four Should miles into one. And uh, yeah, literally we got past it all. And it's just the people were actually just putting the cones down. So they weren't even doing any fucking work. So yeah, <laughs> got in at half two again. Same with the cup game, though. It took ages to get home the cup game as well, didn't it? Yeah, terrible. You should have messaged Ryan Lester to see if he'd let you do a space. Could have done that instead. Oh, no. I I was just, yeah, I was just fuming after the game. I know we'll get into it in a bit more detail, but, yeah, I was just so pissed off with that game. But, anyway, we got aggressive. No, but, like, it was shit, but I think think it was just a bit of an overreaction. Like, they've just put seven past United. Yeah, well, I mean, yesterday, well, yeah, yesterday makes it look better, don't it? But, yeah. uh, you know, it was just, yeah, it was just how, you know, how it's been recently against them. We battered them at Molyneux. The away game in the cup, we, well, we gave them a very good game. It's just like, I don't know why we flipped the tactics on it, but anyway, we'll get well, into it in a bit. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no fin today, Just so it's just the three of us, so we're going to crack yeah. on as usual. But uh, we've just touched on there, Liverpool versus Wolves last week, it feels like. Feels like a lifetime ago that this game, um, that this game happened, Dave. But the first like ten minutes, I thought we've actually come to Liverpool. And we're gonna have a go. Yeah, I was. I half expected us just to a little men behind the ball, um, just try and counter attack. But yeah, you're right. We did. We did try and you know we played. We played quite well for opening stages. I think we tested Allison once or twice, um, but that was about it. Then it was just a long evening uh, from there. And they just had pretty much full full dominance after that. I was a little bit in, you know, intrigued by the the starting lineup. Um, I thought someone like Adama would start again because I, when we played them at Anfield last time, we got a lot of joy from the sort of direct balls, uh, 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 sort of round the back of their defence. Neto had a lot of joy, and I thought if you start Adama, he might have the same joy. But what who was it? It was Sarabia, um, and Nunes, Nunes on the backs. wings, which again just. I think that that yeah. is the end. It's got to be the end of the Nunes on the wing uh, experiment. I think it's got to be the end of the Nunes in the eleven experiment, <laughs> <laughs> as Jude would say. Yeah. No, so, yeah. So no, I just don't. Yeah, it didn't work. It didn't work. Go on, Jude. <laughs> no, I was going to say it seemed like vindication a little bit. I asked the question on the podcast, um, or at least like played devil's advocate. Then coming out of Anfield, loading up Twitter, everyone's like, "What? What is he?" What is fucking shit? Is this? Is that? And again, I never went to those depths of it. I just can't, you know, it was, and rightly so, you know, I still, you know, the output for a player that we spent all that money on is still not good enough for me. And it, and it's not good enough for a player that you can quite clearly see he's got the ability to be influencing games better. But where I will let him off is like he's played left wing, midfield, played in the 10, he's played in the Scott Sellers running to the corner flag. Like Kevin Doyle used to for us under McCarthy. Like he's just not done all these positions. You never really, you know, you haven't really seen it from him. But um, yeah, my 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 big thing with um, the setup against, I think you got got the lineup wrong. If I'm honest with you, against Liverpool, um, I think you've got to have pace. You've got to be able to hurt them going the other way. And I just feel like with having no pace on the uh, out on the wings to almost counter on them a little bit, just meant that. Alexander Arnold and Simicast could just play 15, 20 yards further up the pitch immediately. Yeah. We just had no out ball. And it just felt like Dave said, it just felt like a bit of a procession, really, um, the longer the game went on, to be honest. Yeah, I saw I saw a lot of people give him and their stick, and I felt I felt a little bit sorry for him because it was I mean he didn't play very well, but Dave against like Canate and Van Dyke, it's it's the land of the giants, you know, playing aimless balls up to him, like what 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 could he do? Service was well, awful. 
Yeah, when there's no Wolves player within sort of 15, 20 yards of him, it's it's not going to stick, regardless of how good you are at holding the ball up. You're against arguably the best centre-back in the world, Van Dijk, who's starting to come back to top fitness again now. Canate, you know, has been a huge plus for Liverpool. And I know sort of since they've come back into the squad, ever since the game we beat them, uh, it, you ignore the Real Madrid game, they've been very good defensively. Um, so it was gonna, it was always going to be a difficult game. I, I knew, you know, the after we beat them, they had all the top players come back from from injury, and I think we spoke about that last week. So it was always going to be a tough game, but I just think we made it a little bit too easy for them. And like George said, I think Lopetegui probably, in hindsight, got the selection wrong. Uh, but saying that, you know, he, there's many uh, instances since he's joined where he's maybe not necessarily got the selection right, but in-game has made the right calls. Um, and I think the last few weeks, substitution-wise, he's probably made the right calls, but the players that have come onto the pitch, you know, haven't haven't done the right things. Um, but I think he'll be the first one to to admit that, yeah, the Liverpool game didn't go as, as was planned. I think I disagree a little bit there. I wrote from my article that's out on the BBC today that the last few games, I think Lapategui's got it wrong. With the substitutions, I mean, like the Fulham game, bringing Pedence and Costa on. Yeah, but I mean, would... hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? But I think they were the right subs to do, though. It's just that the players that have come on haven't done the right thing. Like in that, who else would you have brought on in in that situation where you when you're looking for another goal? I, I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily looking for another goal, but I think someone like Pedence has to start. He can't, mm. like he. he He's he he like he feels the game out. He needs to start. You give him thirty minutes. He's like playing with, it's like playing with ten because he's trying everything that he would try in 75, 80 minutes. He tries to condense into thirty minutes. That's why he's expected flicks. He's like nine point <laughs> five because per, per minute. So um yeah. So I just I don't know. I just think Lapategui's either got it wrong from the off or in game has has got it a yeah. little bit wrong. And obviously against Spurs, he's he's. Redeemed, redeemed himself and it was it, it proved fruitful but again like George Sarabia in the first half what he did okay again he's always an out ball for what was an option he's always in a position to receive the ball very intelligent with that the last I think it was the Southampton game fans were on his back so I don't really know what he does and then you look at you know progressive passes received and he's he's top by quite some distance he's, he's, a, he's a clever player but he took him off at half time. Yes, he'd got the yellow card. He, he went straight through. I think it was Alexander Arnold. A bit of a bad tackle, but bring it. I, I wouldn't have taken him off. No, I don't think it was because that yellow card, you know, because and the frustrating thing with that was as well, like it seemed like we played so much extra time, like injury time, should I say, of that half. And it was literally the last action of the of the first half. And Sarabia had spells in that first half where, you know, he brought the ball down really nicely, played a few good passes and it was sort of causing problems because he was getting in that in-between space for Liverpool. Mm. Um, and again, we know what Sarabi's game. He's never going to run anyone. He's not the most dynamic or athletic winger, but he, he picks up clever positions and and plays that way. And I sort of felt like, yeah, if he didn't get that yellow card, he probably would have stayed on the pitch because for me, in the Liverpool game, it was Matinho who was the most ineffective and not because of anything to do with Matinho himself. It's just a 36-year-old player a bloke running you know trying to play out of position a little bit and trying to run behind balls off him and his against Canate and Van Dijk and got absolutely no chance let's be honest so mm. yeah that I think that might have been the change at half time if, if Sir Brown got booked but yeah it was just yeah like I say that game's a bit of a write-off really um for me just how it all went it just wasn't great all for the whole of the night to be honest no mm, uh, the the it, it just folded though didn't they second half Dave and the first goal was the the, the Van Dijk. Um, was it the head of the first goal? It was, wasn't it? And then yeah, yeah. obviously the, the, the counter attack. I don't really think that Kilman and Dawson did did anything wrong really in the game. I know they got caught out a little bit on the counter attack, but it was just I don't know. It went out like a damp squib, didn't it? In the second half, offered yeah. literally nothing. Last shot was in the thirteenth minute, I think. Yeah, the after the first goal was disallowed uh, for VAR. Uh, I, I, I think that's when we sort of just sort of folded. Uh, that's when it, it was made easy for Liverpool. Uh, first goal, yeah, was the Van Dijk header. You probably should have stopped Jota getting the ball back into the area for the second header. Um, and then the second goal as well, I think it was a little bit too easy for Simicast to sort of break through as he did. 
Um, it was just frustrating because you don't mind going to Anfield and losing if you're giving it a good go, uh, i.e. tested Allison a number of times, you know, had some decent attacking moves, but we just didn't. And it was the the frustration that we've seen for the last two years where we've looked like a team that, you know, are really, really poor in front of goal. Um, and I think that particularly almost started to get those old habits out of the team a little bit because we are scoring a few more goals. Um, it looked like that had all just creeped in again because we were absolutely dreadful going forward on 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 Wednesday, and that's what made it frustrating to watch, really. Yeah, and then obviously the likes of Diego Costa came on and, and offered pretty pretty much nothing in 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 the away end. I know that you boys both went, George, starting with you. What was the what was the consensus around around the place? Just like oh, it's Liverpool, or was it was were they pissed off? It was fine. I thought the atmosphere was really good. Um... We were always in, the, like I say, it was nil nil. It wasn't great. There was a lot. There was a few groans and frustrations because we just weren't. It was almost the inevitable. You could feel it, and the Anfield crowd was go. Like it just started to creep up the atmosphere a little bit, and you just sort of, you could sense it was coming. I don't know what you think, Dave. You could almost just sense the goal was coming, unfortunately. And then, as soon as we went one nil down, I think there was no, you know, there was no chance. I, I had no, I had no zero percent of me thought we'd ever get back in that game as soon as the first goal went in. I thought we might have just got about got away with it when the disallowed goal happened, but they just kept, the waves just kept coming, didn't it? Yeah, I'd agree. It was we started off. It was a little bit like the match, really. The atmosphere was the same. Started off really nicely, and then just sort of as the game grew and Liverpool grew into the game, it sort of died down a little bit. I've got to say though, obviously the last twice is it that we played them in the league has been away, have been sort of very close to the end of the season, if not last game or two of the ones I, I I've been to. And the atmosphere has been so toxic. That was the first time that Liverpool fans were actually, I'm not going to say nice, but actually the first time they weren't nasty to us as an away end. So, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't too bad to be fair. Actually getting out and not being spat on or swore at, it was actually qu quite decent to be fair. It's because I weren't there. Yeah. <laughs> it <was> me yeah. <laughs> spitting at you. I remember, was it the first time when they bottled the league and I was just stood outside? I think it was with you, Matt. Yeah, stood yeah, outside and this, this Liverpool old boy just walked straight directly at me. And like he was, move out the fucking way, lad. I was like, mate, I'm like, I've stood here having a conversation with someone. Why don't you just walk around me? It was pretty speaking with uh, Judah, weren't we? I think it was Joe. It, was a, it might have been Judah as well. I don't know. Yeah, we're mm. speaking with someone anyway. I was like, flip it. There's all this room here. You got to walk directly at me. So, yeah, but yeah, like you, George. It was uh, thankfully I slept all the way back, so I didn't really, uh, you know, worry about the traffic or anything. Did you? Did your dad enjoy the game, George? He did, yeah. He well, say he did. Like you know, he's got he's got a soft spot for wolves. You know, he's 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 took me since I've been a little lad and and whatever. So you know, he didn't. You know, he was happy with the result, I guess. But yeah. it was though. He saw one of his mates when we were going into the so as we were going into Anfield into the turnstiles. Saw one of his mates who were, well used to work with, and like he was talking. He goes, "Oh, because he calls my well, my dad's nickname's Rusty. He goes, Oh, you know, oh little Rusty, how are you? Bloody blah, blah, blah. And literally, I think the guy, the bloke clocked, you're a Liverpool fan, so my dad, but he just didn't say it, you know, because he was like, I could just see his thing, but yeah, no, he's fine anyway. He's Where fine, does the nickname so. Rusty come from? Rusty, <laughs> Rusty, Russell, yeah, Rusty. No, not, not like Rush, Rushdie Bully Tall. Not, not, <laughs> no, not, 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 where have you got that from? Sound, 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 a lot of work you've done in. Yeah, it's a, yeah, a, a Rushdie. There's a, a, a backstory back to this thing. It's literally no, no backstory. There you go. Cinderella. So, no, yeah, he did enjoy it. He didn't enjoy driving back there, to be fair. He was just moaning the whole time. He had to get into Worcester for six o'clock the following morning. So, he had about three hours sleep and had to drive off to Worcester. So, but no, he did enjoy it. Thank you. And no no one started on him or called him a fake cop out. So, there you go. I was with. Well, there was a Spurs fan by me in the South Bank because oh, one of my good friends, his brother is a Spurs fan. He was there on Saturday and it was brilliant when we scored because obviously you can't just sit there or stand there. So he, he's just doing this after a Dharma scores. <laughs> 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 the most like muted celebration anyway, while still looking like you give a toss. So, yeah. I don't think anything will beat when we were at Brentford, Dave. When, uh, oh my God, yeah. Add Sid away. Add Sid, add Sid away who's... who's been on, I don't know if he's been on the pod. Has he been on the PS? Yeah, he? He's been early on the pod. Days, yeah, 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 early days. Yeah, been on the pod, and he's him and his dad was in the um in in the, in the home end, and boy, it kicked off. It was it, it was, was when, 
Yeah. Yeah. One all. We scored the first goal, didn't we? And they, they didn't disallowed goal, and wasn't it? it? Yeah. No, he scored, and then they, uh, Totti got sent off. That got rescinded, and they scored, and then never scored the winner, didn't he? And that's when they celebrated. And then they all kicked mm. off at the at full time, didn't they? And the f- some proper few punches being thrown. I'm sure God. we really? spoke about it on the pod last year or the year before. Yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> um, but yeah, it wasn't Adam. Adam, his dad's fault. If any coppers are listening, it was all they were they were provoked. Uh, but George's dad wasn't the only fella coming away from Anfield a happy chappy because a certain talking wolves Dave oh, finished top of the bet night pump winning 34 pounds 50 mate it. but five and a half points clear how, how does it feel there's there's levels mate there's levels I read um, the <laughs> you know what it's because uh you know I, I thought I'll have a I'd have, I'd have a feeling before the game and I, I didn't so I just stuck to my guns and uh kept with Liverpool I think I had Robert uh Robertson at the back so I put Van Dijk in and obviously he scored I had a little bit of luck in the Arsenal game as well so Smashed it in the end, but then I shared it on Twitter, and obviously it said three hundred or three hundred and fifty quid pot or whatever. So all my mates were saying, "Oh my god, you just won three hundred quid!" I was like, "No, I won thirty five quid." But <laughs> <That's> <laughs> enough, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, uh, I actually, yeah. I, it was only uh, me and you in the paid places for this pot, mate. We did say on the last pot, with the last pot, we'd like to all get in the paid places, but I finished ninth, winning just shy of uh, 15 pounds. I mean, it wasn't a bad night in the office for me. Jord and Finn were, I think Jord was a, just a little bit outside, weren't you, mate? A little bit outside, but I had um, Dawson, I had like all Wolves defense, well, I had Dawson and Dawson, Saar, and they're all on for good points, to be fair, until we conceded. Same with fantasy footballer, Captain Dawson. Him and Saul were sharing three bonus points each and a clean sheet. And as soon as that goal went in, I was just like, fuck it, yeah, load of shit. But anyway. No, no. Well, well done, Dave. All. Well done, Dave. What Jeez, have you uh, what have you spent it on, mate? Nothing yet. It's still in the it's still in the pot. I have a rule. When I get to 50 quid, that's when I'll withdraw yeah. it. So we're not far away now. It's, it's only made when we draw all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, moving on then to Wolves versus Spurs. Or Tottenham Hotspur, if you're a purist. Saturday, 3 p.m. And I don't know about you guys, but I came into this game thinking we're going to get some here just because it's Spursy. Um, But Johnny, Neto and Costa came in day for Bueno, Matinho and Jimenez. What were your initial thoughts with that? And were you you shocked to see Neto come in? Lopetegui does this a lot, I feel. He'll have players who are out in the cold and then all of a sudden they're straight in. I know, I know Jotty, J- Johnny's in force, but like Costa, he's on it with Jimenez before, Neto. Is it, is it to breed a bit of confidence? I don't know. Possibly. It was a real shock. I, th- I think even Johnny was a surprise because I think nine people out of ten would have probably thought eight Nori would start ahead of Johnny on the left as well. Um, but when that team came out, I knew it was going to go one of two ways. We're either going to play really well and get the win uh, or we're going to comfortably lose the game. And thankfully, it was... I say played really well, you know, second half we did, but thankfully we got the win. But I've got to say, uh, I know we'll talk about it. Johnny, I thought was fantastic on, mm. on Saturday. Um, Neto, I think, probably showed that he wasn't quite at his top sharpness as of yet, but had little spells, you know, with the ball. Um, and Costa again, I think, I think struggled. And obviously, looks like he's got a pretty nasty injury. According to the Sun, it's an, a career ending injury, according to them. But, um, it could be out for yeah. three months, it'd be career yeah, ending, yeah. yeah. But yeah, we'll yeah, have to wait is. and see. But I think out of those ch- changes, I thought Johnny surprised me massively and did really, really well. Yeah, been brought out of the uh, brought in from the cold, George. But first half, I thought that Spurs knocked the ball around so well, I thought. We're on, we're on for an odd near. I, I was surprised that we went in at nil nil at half time. They, they had some real joy in the, in between our, our full backs. You know, Johnny and Samado played well, but them going to that five and having Poro and um, it was it was the other Perisic. Perisic, sorry, they seemed to get a lot of joy there. Yeah, they did. And I think just quickly before saying about that with Johnny, I think again this is where Lopetegui's so cute, and I think that's where he's like, you know, that's why he's an elite manager. He's I think that's he's obviously favoured Johnny. <laughs> I'm on to you. No, no, it's no. all coming out now. Where's your uh, where's your cargoes from? Where's your cargoes from? Sorry, where's your cargoes from? Um, no, but with Johnny and stuff like, I think it's just so cute because obviously in terms of Kulusevski coming in off the left, playing inverted wingers. Like, I think it's just, you know, in actually coming in, and I think that's probably why he found it favoured Johnny to Aitnery. But I think that first half, I know at half time, I, I, I 
a message saying this is utterly wank or something along those lines. <laughs> but it just felt like, from our point of view and perspective, it just felt like a pre-season friendly. I don't know what it was. We seemed to just play like in first gear. And we were, we were fortunate not to go in behind. I think Saar made a, a, like a, well, I'd say a world-class save, to be honest with you. I think that was off Kulisevsky cutting in, wasn't it? From the mm. right-hand side. Yeah, yeah. Poro at the bar. And that free kick team to take about 10 minutes to even get taken. I, I just it, The whole atmosphere of it all, I just thought, what are we doing here? It just felt so Son flat. had a chance as well, didn't he? He put over the bar. I don't know if it was offside or not. I can't remember. He was just off. He put it on it. Yeah. A lot better than that. Yeah. 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 He blazed it over, didn't he? And like, honestly, after I was just after after the 90 at Liverpool as well, where it just felt like we didn't lay a glove on him. Um, that 45 against Spurs, I think we had we didn't have a sh- an attempt at goal. We didn't we had a shot or a touch in the penalty box. It was just like it felt a little bit like going back to like Nuno Wolves in a little bit like we you know we'll keep it tight for a half and then we'll try and play a little bit. Um, and obviously it was a lot better than that in the second half. But I was just like, this Tottenham team, I feel, I feel we just paid them far too much respect in that first half, if you're asking me. And um, especially as a Tottenham team, we lost to Sheffield United in midweek as well. We should have literally, in my opinion, again, we got three points, don't matter. But... I would have liked to see just come out and take it to him from the first minute, personally. But he obviously made those tactical changes and tweaks at half time again, and it was so much better in the second half. Yeah, the the, the free midfield was what concerned me because you're playing Hoyberg and Skip, and I think Hoyberg's quite underrated personally. Skip's pretty average, but we made him look like Zidane and Makalele in the middle. <laughs> I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe that that they had the freedom. I mean, they were able to play through the through the, through the thirds really easily, but. It was it was just crap and Spurs are notorious for being crap in the first half and good in the second half. I thought, fuck me, if this is how good they're in the first half, <laughs> in the second half, oh, I'm not coming back out. But Davey, he made Lopetegui credit where it's due. Obviously, the Costa injury happened. It looks like a, a bad one, whether he plays for Wolves um, ever again or or whatnot. It remains to be seen. I don't think the club have announced anything, have they? Probably been having a scan no. today. Probably won't hear anything until Friday. Mm. Yeah, I know the um, that that Twitter account injury mechanics um, said something that was more around medial ligaments and cruciate ligaments. But again, if it is, he's he's probably going to be out for the for the for the foreseeable. Um, but him and Jimenez came on, and first half I thought he he, he looked sharp, but was struggling to get into the game as as Wolves were. But Dave changed to a five at the back, and I think I think everyone could see where Spurs' joy was coming from. Um, so I don't think it's a it's a it's a it's a masterstroke, so to speak. But I'm just I'm just glad he bit the bullet and was brave in in bringing Adama and Collins on. I think he's really brave because I know Spurs are having a lot of joy, but at the same time, I thought is he going back five to almost you know defend even more and like almost admit def- like you know just try and get a point out of the game. But going forward, we were so much better. Yeah, I was surprised Lamina was brought off because I thought he had quite a good oh, first half. Oh, he was half. excellent first half. So I'm not too sure whether it was injury related, fitness related or whatever. Uh, so I think Nunes was quite fortunate for staying on as long as he did. But I suppose that just added that slight creative spark through the midfield. But for me, Jimenez, that has got to be his best Wolves performance in over two years. It was, it was like the Jimenez of old, I thought, because he was phenomenal. I think the only thing missing from his performance was obviously a goal. Um, but every single bar Neves's long range efforts, every single one of our key chances had Jimenez involved in it. Um, and I thought, you know, looking at it, the header, uh, which you know, Forster was forced into a half decent save, good ball from Adama. Um, Cunha's chance, which he should have done better with, uh, put it on target as well. Uh, the Samedo chance where Jimenez whipped it across the, the area and Samedo should have got on the end of it. And then obviously the goal, which I think there was a lot of good work involved in, but Jimenez, you know, a couple of quick touches and have it, having a shot. The sharpest p- movement I've seen off him from a long time, for a long time. And obviously forces Forster into the save. Can't take anything away from Adama's finish because I think he's still got a lot to do, but... It's an unbelievable finish, but full credit to Jimenez for that performance because I thought that was, you know, still a lot of room for improvement, but by far one of his best um, performances for a long, long time. And to, and to be fair, the Spurs had that chance where Son hit the bar early in the first, uh, second half, but after that, it, it was one wide traffic, wasn't it, George? Absolutely, yeah. And um, Dawson did really well for that. That you know, he got a flick on it, which actually got it onto yeah. the bar as well. Um, and then, like I say, it was one way traffic after that. Um, I'm sure Finn's 
upset he's missing tonight's uh, recording after you know giving Jimenez all the plaudits, but he's still in hiding after he got started on at Fulham. Um, so <laughs> uh, he's got banned, hasn't he, from streaming now and all yeah. sorts of things. Yeah, that's what I've been told. Um, but no, in all seriousness, like Raul was just incredible. And again, I've I you know everyone sort of gave him a bit of stick, myself included, ourselves on the pod. Like yeah. what really pissed me off about Anf- coming out of Anfield, loading Twitter up was the amount of people again. Jimenez is this, he's washed, he's this, he's whatever. Like, I, I, I think like he had no service. He's arguably playing against the, the best centre half pairing in the league. Like, when I think uh, for me anyway, when they're both fit together, and like it was just you know he had nothing. He was on scraps, and then against Spurs, like I say, Dave, that was like his best. That was like the Raul of old pre-injury, mm-hmm. and like if we've got that Raul, if we put that Raul in any team, he's an asset for anyone. I don't care who you are. Um, mm. You know, all our pos- everything that was positive about Wolves came through him. I think it was so unfortunate the the ball he put across to Semedo as a team goal was yeah. a bit unbelievable. And Raul was involved in that. And yeah, second half, it was just it looked like after the Son chance, like you say, it just looked like one winner, to be honest with you. And I'm just so glad that we actually managed to actually get the goal in the end. It's a massive result in the grand scheme of things, considering all the re- other results um at the weekend. I, I thought Sarabia played quite well in the second half, almost in that. Then we got brought off, but that, that half space almost is like a bit of a, as Dave likes to call it, a, a Mazala. Um, <laughs> and, and Martinho came on and showed Nunes how to play that role. Very disappointed again with Nunes. I don't, I just, I don't know what it is. It, you know, it looks like he's got all the ability in the world, but he's just so like lackadaisical with his passing. He's so like careless. Because mm. you've seen that as soon as he gets on the ball, he's like he's gone past players with like they're not even there. And if you could just. Just do the simple things. We have such a good play on our hands. Uh, that's why I said during the game. I said obviously I got in trouble. Well, not in trouble, but I put that pedence to it out. Pedence, try not to do a back heel challenge. I said, Mateus, you know, let's try and complete a short range pass challenge. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> just daft. But I think um, um, go back to the Liverpool game a little bit. You know, we had the one half decent run against Liverpool where he took about. I know we got a few fortunate deflections and bounces where he took about past three or four players, but. When you like sat on the edge of your own box, you can't afford to try and dribble out of dribble yourself out of danger. So I think it's frustrating. And I said this on a Spurs uh, podcast last week. It's frustrating because every single one of us could see there's a fantastic footballer there. But like you've just said, he cannot do the basic things right at the moment. Um, and that's why I think Lopetegui is persisting with him at the moment. I don't. I'm not, I'm not going to say I don't think he deserves to be dropped because I think you know everyone's position and I think we've got some great players on 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 the bench. I think Jao Gomez deserves a shout. You know, Bubakar Troyore when he's back fit again will, will deserve some time in the team. So he does have to be careful, but he needs to stop performing because the next three games I would say are absolutely massive for our season. Yeah, I, I, I just I don't know what it is, Jordan. I know you've obviously got your opinions as well, but. For me, he's not someone that you start with at, at the minute. He's someone you bring on to try and change the game. Because like Dave said, you're like taking risks on your edge of your own area, like dropping the shoulder. I mean, thankfully, more often than not, he, he, he can pull it off. But oh, it gives me kittens sometimes. And, it, and it's just that, like, like we said, the frustrating thing of just passing a, a five-yard pass because he does the hard things really well. Yeah, like you look at him and you watch like clips of his play. He glides. You, you, You'd th- he, honestly, like he, he should be the best player in our squad. Like in mm. terms of, he actually should be. Like you watch bits, he does things that I've never seen him, any be, midfielder yeah. do. Yeah, like even when he goes past people, he, he doesn't look like he's sprinting past play. He just glides. It's like, and again, this is a, a, like a shout, which again, don't take it too far. But mine's a bit like Yaya Torre. Like, right? No, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, move Stembele. Oh, yeah, like, like when they're just yeah. driving with the ball, it's like you don't look like you're ever going to get him off the ball when he's actually in full flow. And then, like you say, you ask him to like do like a five yard pass. Forget about it. Um, and that's the frustrating thing. I feel like we can't carry him at the minute. Like in terms of the position we're in, we've got players who are on the bench. We've got depth now who want to come on and can do a job for us. Like we can't keep carrying him. But I'm the same as probably everyone else. Yes, I'm starting to question the price tag and. You know what his best position and all this sort of stuff is, but you could just see him having like one of these games where he just explodes. Whether mm. he like, I generally feel like he could put one in from forty yards, like or just you know, say beat three, four men and just score. And that's the thing; it's like it's gonna happen. Like you almost feel like the, the magic; it's gonna happen, but yeah. it's just getting frustrating now as to when. 
Yeah, it's like almost like when's a, when's a penny gonna drop? I think I think January time though. He he had a few games. Was like, like we're finally looking. To, you know, we're finally seen the player that we paid all that money for. But I just um, does he find it too easy? Does he has he got one eye on a move to Liverpool? I, I I I don't know what it is. I, I don't know what it is. But it's so frustrating because, like you said, Jordy probably is technically you know potential wise our, our best player, but. Just needs to try and realise that potential. And hopefully, he can do that at Wolves or for however long he's there. Um, but they, from a from an actual match point of view, it was it was nice to see Wolves actually create some chances. Yeah, and they weren't just like half chances. There were chances which really tested Fraser Forster, but some great team moves as well. I thought I like we mentioned Johnny already. He got involved in a number of great moves, including the goal. Um, and you know. Every every single one of our chances, I think Neves knew, you know, Fraser Forster couldn't catch a cold. He get punching everything out. Um, and Neves knew, you know, we could test him. And I think Jimenez obviously as well, he was unlucky with the I say unlucky, you know, he put the ball in the back of the net and it but he was uh, was well offside. I did ask people on Twitter to send me a screenshot and I almost got laughed at for, for even asking to, to have a look at it. Um but we yeah, we created the opportunities. I thought Johnny Samado on the right hand side, but Adama made a big, big difference. Uh, you know, whipping the ball into the area for the the key chance for for Jimenez at the start and uh, the goal as well, which, like I said earlier, I thought Jimenez did quite well to get it back in into the area and then the finish by Adama as as well. Um, but the the pressing I thought by Martinho was you know fantastic in that second half when he came on. There was a moment yeah. I think it forced the Cunha chance where him yeah, and uh, where Martinho and Neves put, really pressed high. And you know, caused Spurs to just you know fall apart. Um, but yeah, couldn't you should have done better with the chance? But the team chances we were created were fantastic. Yeah, I don't think we've necessarily got the energy to press like that for large portions of the game. But it's encouraging to see that we can turn it on as and when needed, and you know, forced forced the uh, force Spurs into into making those errors and force them higher up the pitch. Probably a better chance of scoring, but. Can you came on, George? Um, what were your thoughts with, with with his performance? It looks like that Jimenez and, and Cunha have, have struck a bit of a chord from ever, whenever they've played. Yeah, I thought um, it was good to see him back, obviously, so quickly after the, the injury at Fulham. Um, I think he should have done better with his chance. I think, you know, I think he'd think that as well. Not that it was like an absolute sitter or anything like that, but I think he's disappointed not to work the goalkeeper. But any time I've seen them two play together, like it was second half at Forest in the Carabao Cup as well, wasn't it? Where they both end up playing up front together and they were mm. excellent that night as well. For the goal come through, wasn't it? The... Yeah, yeah. The ball across the box and stuff. So it, ball, it feels yeah. like we might have sort of like landed on something a little bit. And I think when it comes to like strike partnerships and attack, you know, attackers, like it's sometimes you just click with someone. It doesn't necessarily mean like they're the best individual players. But they just click and they're just telepathic and they just seem to know where each other is. And I feel like we're starting to see, and again, I'm not jumping too far ahead because him and his had one good game and now I'm thinking, oh, I might actually... Drinking from the Kool-Aid now, mate. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. But like, I do generally think we've got something there with Cunha and Jimenez where whether it's by luck, whether it's by um, coaching or whatever, it just feels like they're just... It looks like a bit of a partnership that could be very fruitful for us if we stick with it. To be quite honest yeah. with you, yeah, we couldn't. You like, I'm not sure, and I think we'll probably never be sure. We're not sure, like, what he is, but he just he just looks like it, he just looks like a good footballer, like Sarabia. They just look like good quality footballers, and it's and it's how you piece them all together. Is that's why Lopetegui's played that paid the big money day. But just looking at the bet, mate, pot, um, for the Spurs versus Wolves, which was part of the Saturday 3 pm, so only Dave. Was uh, was one of the well, only day from talking walls came in the pay places. He finished ninth, winning seven pound twenty. So, not a bad week for Dave. But and re nineteen seventy nine won ninety pound, finishing first. So, big congratulations to them. But yeah, Dave, another another pay place. Uh, what's uh, what's the secret? I, I didn't really expect to uh, to be involved in in the pay places for this one. I didn't obviously keep an eye on it throughout. <laughs> you the make game. it sound like you <laughs> like failed a, failed a fitness test. <laughs> no, it was the. Uh, well, let me just double check the team because I'm sure my team I, I did fairly not wrong, but I I put Kepper as vice because I just had a good feeling that Chelsea weren't going to lose to Leeds. 
and he was going to keep a clean sheet and have a couple of shots saved. Um, and Matoma is captain as well. The the one thing, and it's it shafted me twice now, bet mate, is and I suppose I've just got to get used to it on fan, actual fantasy Premier League. If you get an assist for an own goal, or you'll you'll get the assist, obviously. Or if you win a penalty, you'll get the assist. Where on bet mate, that doesn't happen. So Matoma won the penalty but didn't get the assist. Obviously, I got shafted with the Rashford veg horse thing a couple of weeks ago as well. So I could have been a much higher up, but uh, my two strikers failed. I had Harry Kane and Ollie Watkins. Um, so, but fact, you know, and even the Arsenal players were quite. The guy who was top, I thought, was quite lucky as well. To be honest, the guy that won. Oh God, you had, don't sound bitter at all. No, no, listen. He had <laughs> he had uh, Harry Kane, uh, and then his captain of voice was Zinchenko and Saka. So Zinchenko and Saka didn't get that many points because obviously all the Arsenal goals come from quite obscure players. So, but he's other players. He had Chilwell and McAllister that basically won in the pot. To be fair, so yeah. I had a look at it. I thought flipping it, he jammy with them captain choices really to win the pot. But it was it was quite a low scoring week overall. I thought anyway. Yeah, it, it was. It was. Um, but lads, it's so good to be back on a on on the winning side again, especially against the Spurs side. We, we were banging for them. I know we mentioned at the top of the show about being Spursy, but I think they'd won four out of the last five, and somehow Antonio Conte got nominated for manager of the month. I don't think he managed the game, did he? Uh, <laughs> was he his assistant? So, a bit, of a bit of a strange one there. But moving on to the game at Sunday at St. James's Park, Newcastle versus Wolves, Dave. Did we go five at the back? <laughs> it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I did think, I thought about that. And, you know, after the success of the second half, it's like, do we, do we play it? I don't think so. I don't think you start with it anyway for, for now. Um, I think you'd stick with the four for now, um, especially against, no disrespect to Newcastle, I think they're a fantastic team, but I don't think they possess as much going forward as um, as Spurs do. So I think you start with the four, but I think, you know, whenever you go five at the back, um, you know, I was going to say it works, but we have had instances where it's been absolutely dreadful, but, you know, it worked last game and we looked a lot better going forward for it. But I would, I would stick to the four personally for now. What about you, George? You switch to the five. I feel like with Wolves, we're always just going to revert back to a five. Now it's just it's in that it's just ingrained it's the DNA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Default skin. No, the yeah. Same as Dave. I think even when we wanted to try and shift away from five to a four, we had more centre halves at the club than we did centre midfielders. So it almost made sense to play more centre halves than it did centre midfielders at that point. Anyway. Um, no, I think I think you've got to go with a four. Um and you can always refer it to a five. I thought um quick mention to Collins as well, obviously, against Spurs. I haven't forgotten about him. I thought he was good when he came on. Mm-hmm. Uh a good forty five minutes after being out in the cold for a few games. But yeah, I just think with Newcastle, you go back to a four, the options there if you need it. We've got enough quality and depth in those in that midfield area to change it up and and you know change personnel around if you need to. And I just feel with Newcastle at the moment, it's not a bad time to play them just because I think the Carabao Cup defeat is almost like sort of burst the bubble a little bit. I know they're not in great form in the league. Either. I think they drew four out of the last five before they've lost to City. So it might be four, four draws and two defeats in the last six, but I could be wrong in that. So I don't think they're in the best form in the league. So yeah, look, I, I think um, we've got to go up there with a bit of confidence and like I say, they're not, they're not as good for me as, as Liverpool or Tottenham Hotspur. So it's, you can get something up there, although it is a very difficult place to go. And they do love the football up there. Let's not forget that. <laughs> <laughs> but Newcastle, no, no win in the last five, as you as you just said there. Yeah. Um, I, I think that Carabao Cup final. It's almost like the build up has has kind of knocked their league form a bit because that's all they're concentrated on, and that's what the you know the, the buzz around the town has been, and then. That they've, they've lost that and, and felt deflated. Dave, do you think we can we, we can go there and and, and get the, get the three points? I mean, I'd take a point right now. I, I think we'll go there and get something out of the game. I I, I felt um, I felt we should have beaten them at Molyneux, and that's when they were still on a pretty strong run. Obviously, it was feels like ages ago, but it was the, when it's Huang whipped it, it yeah. back across his own box. Um, but yeah, I, I always think we, you know, we give them a pretty good game. It's always close games between us. Obviously, St James's Park is a little bit more difficult to go to, but I've I've got every belief that we can go there and, and get something out of this game. And I think if we can, 
you know, you build on the, the victory against Spurs and you go into the games against Leeds and Forest on real high confidence and high morale. And I, I'll be speaking very, very early here, but I think if you get points from the Newcastle game and then beat uh, Leeds and Forest, as you would probably expect us to, I think we'll be touch wood safe. So it's probably early days to say it, but yeah, I think uh, next few weeks could define the rest of the season. How many, how many points do you reckon we need to stop up? Thirty-eight. Yeah, like another. What are we on now? Twenty-eight. Uh, yeah, ten, ten points. Yeah, ten points. We'll be yeah. safe. It's too, it's too close at the bottom at the minute. I think thirty-eight, and you'll be safe. Obviously, you don't want to sit. I think thirty-eight is about the average, isn't it? I know they say forty points, but thirty-eight is about the average that you. On twenty-seven. To stay up. On twenty-seven. Yeah. So. Another four wins between now and the end of the season. I think you'll be safe. What, in, in, within 12 games you think that's that'd, doable, that'd be doable. We're, yeah with the players that we've got with the teams that we've still got to play we've got to play Leicester Palace Forest Leeds Everton um, got to play all and I'm not saying we're going to yeah. go and beat every single one of them but I think you know you, they're, they're winnable games yeah I mean looking at the games that you'd probably earmark as to get points Leeds Forest Leicester Palace Everton probably get something at Villa at home as well Maybe, maybe you might get you might to be fair, you might even get some off Chelsea at home as well. So, but you look at the again, I know this ends up coming coming out, but you look at between Palace and the bottom of the league, the post Christmas table, we're like four points ahead of anyone in terms of points. I think mm. we're on 17 points and Forest are on 13. I know Forest got a game in hand, but we're picking up the most points out of all of all of those. So, we should be we should be absolutely fine. I think I said on the last podcast about Palace being sucked in. Or the yeah, they've been really before. poor. They've got, I think, they've had got seven points since the restart. Um, yeah, I think. I, I mean, they're on the same points. It's also got a game in hand. It, it, it's anyone from twelfth down. I think Villa. I think. I think they might improve now they got Zaha back because he's been injured a little bit. But uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. It'll be interesting. Yeah, because you've got that. You've got that five point cushion between Everton and Wolves now, which you know it, it, it's a couple of games, isn't it? Before you. It gives you a bit, a bit of a buffer. If you get... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, Everton. I thought that I thought they'd start to turn a corner, but I mean, they're I mean, they're they're running to crap as well. I mean, they they've still got to play. They've got to play us. They've got to play Man City. They've got to play United. They've got to play Tottenham. They've got to play Chelsea. You know, there's, yeah, really tough. Fight, they've got to play Newcastle as well. So you know, there's, there's, and then they've got the likes of Bournemouth, which again is a six pointer. So. Mm. It's a, it's, a t- it's a tough, tough run for them. Probably ours is a, a, a little bit more of a run. But George, Nunes uh, and or Martino, in, in if they play uh, the free midfield, uh, probably Nunes. And I only say that because I only say that because I'm just thinking about Newcastle's midfield three. And although I don't think there's a lot of quality when it comes to Joe Linton and Sean Longstaff. They just got legs in them, and I remember playing that when we played them at Molyneux earlier on in the season. A the one, the two things I took from the game was from Newcastle was a the back four all seemed to be like the fucking monsters of Space Jam. They're all <laughs> massive brutes. They just look mm-hmm. massive. And the second thing was I just couldn't believe how quick they were in the transition for the midfield. Yeah, like, it was good. Man. Willock, long staff. I know Gimares was suspended at that point. Willock, and it was just like honestly they broke at pace on us. So. I feel like we we we're not the quickest or most mobile of midfield, so I would like us to have a bit more pace in there. I wouldn't even be half surprised to see Joe Gomez have a game either. I don't think Joe Gomez will start a game for the end of, between the end of the season. I Just, I think he will if Neves gets suspended, which I, I think is very likely that he will. Oh, he definitely is going to get, he'll get two a start. Games, um, saying that, is all Joe Linton suspended? <coughs> oh, he is actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually remember now. Yeah. Oh, so, I'm in my bit, mate, team. I know, oh, to be fair, I saw the news man. earlier and then I saw uh, your bit, mate. I thought, oh, I'm going to save it for the pod. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> When's the cut off for 10 bookings? It's like six games' time, isn't it? Yeah, I saw it's on Twitter earlier. <laughs> never is sees what is it? One booking, one, yeah, one more yeah. booking for a two game ban. So, I think if you want him to avoid avoid getting booked to Newcastle because you, you want him for at you least one of, if not both, or Leeds or Forest. Yeah, you want them both for them. I'll have to. Mm. I'll just double. I'll double check when it is. But George, you think we can go there and get a result? I do, but it's uh, they're a good team at the minute, aren't they? And the, the crowd and they're all behind them. And 
I just feel like what saves us a little bit is I do feel they're a bit deflated and I feel like the bubble has burst a little bit. Um, that's not taking anything away from what they've done so far this season. Uh, I don't really like Eddie A one bit, but I can't because the job is done there. Um, I think it's one of those places where you've just got to go, especially whilst the, whilst the fans are on side with them at the minute as well. Um, just keep it quiet 15, 20 minutes. Just don't concede early. Don't concede early. Play yourself into the game. I'd, take, I'd shake your hand and snap it off right now for nil nil at half time and just play from there, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's uh, up, up until including the 32nd game. So, yeah, six uh, six the games. Chelsea game, I think, is the last game, I think, off the top of my head. But if you're, I mean, he'll play obviously against Newcastle, but he can't miss Leeds and Forest, can he? No, that's the difficulty. I, I think it's even you hope that maybe you've got a decent cushion come 75 minutes and then you can bring him off or whatever. But the way he is, I've noticed it a lot more, is in the, the referees here a lot, which I yeah. think, you know, as a captain, you've got to be. But all it takes is one prat of a ref to turn around and say, no, I'm not having it anymore. And you get a cheap booking. That's what he's got to be careful of. I think the booking on Saturday, on Saturday was avoidable, to be fair. But he's pulled him down, didn't they? Yeah, but I think. I think there was cover there. I don't think he would have got the shot away. So yeah, it's, it's hard it to see from, from the North Bank. Yeah. But let's move on to the bet, mate, pot for the week. So it's £3 in for your chance to win a share of £240. And it's just the Newcastle versus Wolves pot. But this pot is capped at 100 players. So no one, if 100 players are in, that's it. The pot's locked in and no one else can join. So Dave, do you want to talk me through your team? Yeah, I mean, you can see what the mood's like um, for us at the minute because I've gone very heavy Wolves. I've gone with Sar and Goal, uh, Samedo and Dawson as my back two, um, only because I don't know who will start on the left. Um, I, I'd assume it would be Johnny again, but I've stuck with Samedo and Dawson there for now. Neves as captain again with Bruno Gamares as my vice. I think, uh, obviously, Bruno, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is just coming back from a little bit of an injury, so he's breaking in slowly again but he, he was always one for a good amount of points and Nebes is always a cert to get a decent amount of points um and then my front two again depends on who starts so I've gone with Sarabia and I've gone with Jimenez because I think he's due a goal so yeah, yeah I've gone very heavy walls you say that there Dave about not sure who's going to play at left back but the beauty of bet mate is you can change your team up until five minutes before the match kicks off yeah exactly nice little, uh, segue. Yeah. It's wonderful so George <laughs> talk me through your team mate you need to uh, yeah. you need to regain a bit of confidence, don't you? Have you have you gone have you gone Wolves safe or or Newcastle safe? Or you've got gone no, I'm going Wolves. Well, I always back always got to back the Wolves boys, haven't you? So I've gone for Sar in goal, Dawson and Kilman because and again Kilman might swap depending on one of the fullbacks, but I think Dawson and Kilman's the the back two for now. Still, I've gone with Ruben Nevsh, captain. I've got Mario mm-hmm. Lamina vice captain. Um, and I've gone for Sarabia and I've gone for Anthony Gordon just because I don't really know why. I just He's a bit of a defensive winger. He might make some tackles and interceptions. I'm certainly not picking him in there to get many goals. I'm uh, just hoping to get those tackles and interceptions points from one of the strikers up top. Yeah, someone said on Twitter the other day that Anthony Gordon looked like Princess Diana, and now I've seen it. <laughs> I, c- I, can't, I can't see it. I, f- I, f- I, think, it, I think it's the hair. It's definitely the trim, yeah. It's definitely yeah, the trim yeah. or Claire Balding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, like <laughs> Absolutely. <shout. laughs> I've gone with, and there's going to be a change in the midfield, as I've just been reliably informed by Dave, that Joe Linton suspended. Or he might not be, and he's just trying to play a few tricks. But luckily, mm. as I've said, you can change it five minutes before kickoff. So if Dave has been a little bastard, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, got Jose Sarr in goal, Dawson and Johnny at the back. Captain Huben Nevsh. Vice captain Joe Linton, which I will change to Bruno Guimaraes, and then Jimenez, mm. who's uh, who's going to get a goal, and Sarabia up top. So, yeah, we've all gone Wolves heavy. Which when we sent the, our teams into the bet, mate, boys earlier from to whip a graphic up with all us, we're like bloody hell. Like this is the most <laughs> positive I've ever seen. I've ever seen <laughs> your, your selections. I said it's it's amazing what a win can do for confidence and morale. Um, but, you know, remains to be seen whether Wolves can get the point. So just a recap of the pot. It is £3 in for your chance to win a share of £240. Newcastle versus Wolves, capped at 100 players. And, of course, with that, please gamble away. 
Right then, gents, moving on to the questions. So big thanks to those who sent in their questions via Twitter today. So starting with James Henry, not the Ooh. James Henry who once played the for White Pillay. White Pillay. <laughs> um, but he's asked, looks like Costa's last game in football. It's pretty, he worked for the Sun. Um, <laughs> do, you, do you think we have enough in Don Fabio Crouch? Well, I'm sure, I think he means, obviously, Sasha Kolodzic. And Crouch. Raul, yeah. <laughs> and Raul next year, or do we need to buy? I think, well, I don't know, no, that Raul's come into it a little bit more. Oh, mate, we all drink drinking from the call, lad. He has a nice thing. I think, like, no, I think you still have a number nine. I think Wolves have got to learn that we need to uh, need a proper number nine. So, uh, I don't know, actually. Now, you say, if those three are, if those three are definitely staying, uh, then I think you keep them. But I don't know, I, just don't, I don't think they're proven enough yet. It's hard. Mm. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, we need one, don't we? Um, but if you you can't have four centre forwards, can you? That's, that's what I mean. Saying. That's the thing, though, as well. You probably need to get rid of the thing. Is like with Sasa, um, we saw him for forty-five minutes, didn't we? And he looked okay. Um, I saw he, he was on. It was at the Safari Park one the other day as well with the giraffes. Mm. I think I saw online. <laughs> <laughs> uh, same height. So at least you know, yeah, same height, yeah. Um, Fabio, I like. I just love the idea of Fabio coming back and getting twenty goals a season for us. However, part, there's something in me just. Like, Why are we going down? It's probably, yeah. yeah, no, no. It's just like it might, might be like the Yadar in my back of my head somewhere. Um, just going, you know what? You can't still rely on him at that age to go and like lead the line for us for thirty-eight games of a Premier League season. So, I think if you can get a striker, you obviously go out and get one. But if they're not cheap, are they? Let's be honest with you. Um, and, so that's my only problem with it. And with Jimenez, obviously, I'm saying no because he played well on Saturday. The chances are he's gashed for the rest of the season again. And so we have to definitely buy <laughs> well, one. Then, so, yeah, but, you know, it's, it's hard. It's very hard to say. Very reactionary I am on this podcast. Yeah. With Fabio mm. Silva, though, if he comes back and he says, right, you're not going to be our number nine, you're going to come off the bench, he'd probably say, piss off, I want to go and play football. And then how long's left in his deal? Two years. So they'll probably it's extend it again. Uh, yeah, try I, I think it if again. we, um, I, th- I generally think if he he'll come back in the summer because he's got that uh, in a good way as well. You need it as a striker. He's got that bit of arrogance about him. I think he thinks, you know, I think he believes in his hype and he's a good player and yeah, all. And he is. Don't get me wrong. But I think if he comes, if he gets told he ain't first choice, I think he'd be like, I want to move, permanent. like permanent. I think he'd be off. I think you lose a lot more um, money, then. Mm. But well, that is what it is, isn't it? Yeah, a hundred percent. I think you know if he if you could tell him you're going to start twenty twenty five games in the thirty eight. You know, I think that's different. But you can't, you can't give players guarantees in the Premier League. You know, you have got to earn your spot, and that, that's that's where I think we are. With it. Sam Beacon is asked, uh, "How much do you think Adama can bench press?" <laughs> I reckon 120 kilogram, 60 kg on each. What do you reckon, Jordan? Mm, I, Maybe a little bit less. Roughly, I don't know. I don't know because, like, again, the only thing with the Dharma is he said, like, that interview when he said he's never done a gym session in his life. It was just, I was like, you're taking the piss. You most definitely have done a gym session. But how much does he weigh? About what you reckon? About 90 kg. Like in between I, 85 and 90 possibly, yeah, that's a look. Because he's like, he's going to be very, he's not going to have much body fat. Is Wolves website so. used to always have him really wrong, but I'd assume they've sort Wolves website I, reckon it's 72 kg. Which I think fucking is, no way. Yeah. Um, no. I would Eleven, say you're not far off, Matt, to be honest with you. 120 ish. Yeah. I'd, maybe a little Max. bit less. Yeah. It's easier when you've got smaller arms, though, like because you're not length, because you've got less of a less distance. To, to, yeah, but you know, when he says he's never done a gym session in his life, like he's never picked up a weight, it's bit like I, I think what he means by that is I've not gone into a gym and just like smashed the bench press out. Right. Yeah, yeah, like he's he, like he does a lot of plyometric training, doesn't he? Um, yeah. So I think that's what he means. But it, all of his all of his videos where he's got like the the belt around his waist and the, and the, it's like a twenty kilogram weight hanging off him. So he, he does weight train, but just not what you'd have from Different, a traditional. Yeah. Jew said, uh, Dave, how much do you think he could pinch press? Mate, I, I don't know. I, I've 
I don't. I've never done weights at a gym, as you could probably tell. So I don't really know. I probably would compare it to what I can lift and double it, but I don't know what I can lift. So <laughs> I, if you lift more than forty kg, mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Two My estimations on that group. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of them little handheld weights, you know, the little ones you, you use for jogging and all that. So, yeah. <laughs> that your ma, your ma's got in the garage, yeah, yeah, yeah. which you bought them like eight years ago from <laughs> J, JJB. <laughs> JJB. <laughs> Adrian has asked, is Pedence on his way out? Why was he out of the squad on Saturday? Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, Lopetegui said it was tactical, uh, which is interesting. Um, I so don't know. I think been, he's been canned. Yeah, I don't think he's got long left. I think in the summer he'll be gone. Mm. I think they need to as well because he's only got what? Will it be? He's got a year left after this. Year left after this year. Yeah. Where would you see him going though, George? Um, it's sport, a, it? oh, actually, yeah, no, honestly, cool. like it's so hard, isn't it? They hate no. him, they hate him now, yeah. But it's so oh. hard, isn't it? Just because he does some things that are just magical, and then he just and then he plays like he's never kicked a ball in his life when he comes off the bench, to be quite honest with you. So, I don't know, I reckon he, you know what, I'd put money on him either going back to Olympiacos or maybe ended up at like Ferner Bache. Or Galatasaray, <laughs> one of those. I can see him wearing one of those tops. Come to Besiktas. Yeah, hundred percent. One of those. Real Betis all over. Do you think? No, no. I reckon. No, it's only like Spain. But I think Turkey's a shout. They've probably got a bit more money to spend on him as on a transfer fee. Because they, I don't know. I don't think the big teams, but well, even some of the big teams are struggling financially in Spain. I really don't know where he'd end up. I can't see him going back to Portugal. Say, say if he barely features for us between now and the end of the season, he's got a year left on his deal. What do you think is a, a, a respectable transfer fee for him? I think he'll look crap, but you're probably only going to get like between, you're probably going to get between 10 and 12 million for him. Yeah. <laughs> much. I think that's right, right though, isn't it? So. Uh, yeah, I, I think 10 and 12 million is probably, you know, that's, that's a, that's, Good, like good money for someone buying him. Yeah, well, I think it's, I think that's what you get for selling. Though. How much should we pay? Eighteen million, or was it even more than that? Uh, it might have been close to twenty 12. million, twenty at the top. Where we've had ons and stuff. Yeah, but then so, like, bearing in mind, you've never that's not just for this contract. You've got your money's worth out of him pretty much if you bought if you're paying off. Um, let's have a look. I'm, I can't remember how much we bought him for. To be honest, I think it was sort of like eighteen and a half million, rising to twenty, something like I that. I think it was just over tw- twenty, wasn't it? Yeah, twenty point five, something like that. Yeah, but then I, I don't know. He, he comes in and out of games too much. We need a little bit more consistent. Yeah, nineteen point six million euros, so just under twenty million. Yeah, mm, not bad, not so, bad. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. We will. Josh Burden's asked if you were to pick a player of the season since. Lopetegui came in. Who would it be? Here's his Samedo. Yeah, I think Samedo's a good shout. Uh, it's hard. Like, if you don't include the new signings, like you're looking throughout the season, I think mean, Nevers has still got to be up there, man. Got be, I, I, there's, like, there's no I just, I, I have not seen him for as long as I can remember. I have not seen him play a bad game of football. He's just been absolutely unbelievable. But the interesting thing the last couple of weeks is that, you know, when Nevers tended to sort of almost sit in the back four to pick up the ball a lot more. It's Lamina. Lamina's done that yeah. the last couple of weeks. Um, but I thought, yeah, Nevers has been absolutely phenomenal. So uh, for me, it's got to be him. I'm trying to think of anybody else. Um, I think, think, think Lamina. You could, you could. If you include the transfers, I think if you include yeah. the transfers, yeah, yeah. Lamina. Uh, he's been a surprise. You know, I thought he'd come in and do a good job. Uh, I didn't think he'd be as good as he has been. Dawson as well. But Tomato's up there, I think. Yeah, Tomato's up there. Yeah, I, I would, uh, I, I'd say, I'd say Nevers. It has to be like Dave's has said. He's, he's, uh, he's not put, a, he's not, he's not put a foot wrong for, for as long as I can remember. Even, um, uh, can you say so? Because he, he started a bit rogue. No, no, because the Man City game, Liverpool game. He's had two stinkers. Yeah, Villa. Yeah, okay, true. Villa, yeah. Which, I know. What Liverpool game? At home. The cup. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. The pro clubs yeah. jostling so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I came from pro clubs. It's just oh, that's how he plays. But to be fair, he's, he's improved a lot, and he might like he might a few cracking saves again at the week. You know, so. you know. I think I mentioned it. We relying on him a lot less, sort of playing out from the back. But on Saturday, yeah. we started doing it a little bit more, and it was it was worrying me a little bit. But yeah, we we got through it in the end. Uh, but yeah, it's got to be nervous. Got to be nervous. Yeah. He keeps pinging balls out for fucking throwing, so it's pissing me off. Yeah. Just, just got the touch of the Patricios about him at the minute. Yeah, but, his, uh, his distribution was a bit ropey first half, but thankfully we didn't have to rely on him in that much second half. Yeah. Amar's music show has asked if we get a big bid in the summer of 50 million for Nunes, would you sell? He's a very talented player, but I don't see why any club would sign him based on his play for us. However, I do feel if we sold him, he'd suddenly turn into prime Modric. I, I think that that happens with every player that you say you think are bloody a lot. They, they have one good get look at Cody when he started at Everton. It was like, well, we tell just so, and now he, he's out the team to a oil tanking Michael Keane. But George, I'll, I'll come to you. Fifty million pounds for Nunes on the table right now. Do you sell him? Deal, deal, no, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. no <laughs> deal. Uh, no, you got to take it, haven't you? I think uh, I know we spoke about it on the last few podcasts. I always struggle to see a team that are going to come in and pay. 50 million quid for him. Like, I don't understand what Liverpool have seen from him in this 12 months as to why they'd sign him moving forward, if you know what I mean. So I, I'm pretty confident we'll keep hold of him for next season. I just can't see anyone paying the fee that we'll demand for him. Um, but yeah, if someone comes with a 50 million pound check, oh, I'm taking it, to be honest with you. What about you, what about you Dave? Um... As of right now, probably, yeah. But I think there's still a very good footballer in there. So I think it'd be up to Wolves, obviously, to negotiate some sort of sell-ons or add-ons or whatever. But I think, yeah, you would probably take it as of right now, to be honest. Yeah, I think I, think I would as well. But from from speaking to someone fairly close to the club about when, when the Nunes thing broke... Because I was just thinking, oh, boy, like we've been, we've been played here. But Dave said there's nothing agreed with Liverpool, but... It doesn't mean that, that, that something couldn't be agreed or Mendes could yeah. get his, his hands all over it. Um, I had a couple of questions around the accounts that have been released uh, for the, I believe it was the 21 22 season. Yeah. Um, and one of the big talking points is that a certain Wolves director has had a 50% uh, <laughs> pay rise. Well, it's, it, it, you know, it's, it's Jeff Shee. Um, and a lot of people are saying, "Well, why is why is Jeff getting a you know a fifty percent pay rise? We've been shit, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. But it's just that there's there's plenty of directors in the league on a million pound plus, so it's it's more just like a catching up by the looks of things. Probably underpaid in terms of benchmarking for his role. So that's all it is. It does a job of four different blokes anyway. So I was going to say, like yeah. when you pro it out, is it about eight pound an hour? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, what does that work out? What, what's he on then? Six hundred and twelve, is it? Was it something, something like that? that? Yeah. What's that? It's what all those, yeah, it's what all those seasons to keep hype for everyone anyway. Gone to Jeff's back pocket. So that's fifty-one <laughs> think... grand a month. So a week. It's only, and I don't mean that's that. Like in footballing terms, I think twelve grand a week. Don't sound that ridic- that ridiculous, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it from like a. a Pay P A Y E point of view, which we're not going to be on pay P A Y E anyway. That's a take home of around twenty seven grand a month, twenty eight grand a month. But obviously, I, I George probably a bit more versed in this than I am. But I'd imagine a lot of a lot of his dough is probably a dividend rather than a hundred percent P A Y E because of tax purposes. Um, yeah, of course, it is yeah, so. and he's gonna he's gonna be probably getting paid by. He's probably got Basically. shareholder of Foza and he's probably got shares in guess who you know the you know, I can't ever say that name, you know what I'm about. The guess oh, a few, yeah. Mendez is yeah, guess a few, yeah. Um he's probably got shares and all that. I'll get paid in shares and everything. Like he's probably on well more than what's been documented in terms of in the accounts, let's be honest with you. He's probably listening so, to this laughing, thinking you boys have not yeah, got a clue. Yeah, yeah, you ain't got it. No, I'll wipe my arse yeah. with that 12 grand. <laughs> yeah. Literally, you probably don't even touch the sides. So, yeah. you know, I just don't think it's one of those things, you know, just, just don't get caught up in it. It's like, it's like you say, it's barely nothing in comparison to other directors of, of football clubs. So, it don't matter, oh, yeah. does it? I'm glad that that's, that's one of the only highlights of the account. So, it's pretty sort of, you know, 
normally there's all this all singing or dancing, you know, with the accounts. But this year, I know we made a loss, but it's uh, most yeah, clubs make a loss, though. Yeah, it's, but it's been pretty sort of uh, there's been no aggro about it, thankfully. No, and, and, and I spoke to Kieran Maguire about it anyway today briefly with the price of football. And um, he just basically said, like, yeah, it's just pretty standard. I, I did, I did see that there was um, some of the some of the losses were kind of offset by, and it was it an insurance payment. Did, Ooh, I, did I, I read that right? I haven't, I haven't, I haven't read I haven't it. Really I haven't looked 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 into it properly. You know, so. all that stuff goes over my head, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so insurance claim and player sale profits reduced losses from fifty eight to forty million. Um, oh, maybe so. you reckon it was on the stadium. You know, I reckon it down. might have been the fire. Yeah, yeah. That's like Probably burned down. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. When did that happen, Dave? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, was that was that twenty one, twenty two? Probably. Probably yeah. wasn't it? It was. Yeah. But would it be that expensive? Would it be been that expensive to get it up and yeah, running? January twenty third of Jan twenty twenty two. So yeah, probably depends what the damage though. To be fair. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to find how much was uh, on on insurance, but I actually can't. Uh, I actually can't find it, so if I do, I'll, I'll I'll post it. But yeah, I don't think there's anything really to be concerned about. It's it's always it's it's the standard of always comes out like what the walls owe um, in terms of for for player sales and what are they owed. So Wolves are owed forty seven million pound from other clubs. Um, again, this is twenty one twenty two, so not taking into account this season. Um, but they also owe fifty four million pound on player purchase instalments. So. Yeah, pretty pretty standard, really. A uh, couple more questions before we go, lads. Um, Sean Mitchell has asked, "How many points can you drink on a big night out?" You know, Pint. I'm not a big points. You know, I'm yeah. not a big drinker. I, I, I don't know points, man. About three, and I'm done, man. I, honestly, I'm not. A, <laughs> it, you know, I'm not a big, not a beer drinker. That's why. You know what? What about the other week? I was on the Coronas. I did all right then. You know. A little bit lighter, get the lime involved. That was a little bit nice. The lime involved, get, get in the mixer. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, I did well, all right with those. But well, that beer, drink? I think I'm starting to. I mean, I know I drink drink it on every flipping. I have a beer every Monday. That's about it. So. But you, Jordan, how many points do you reckon you could sink on a big one? I think it's all tact. So, like with beer, I think it's tactical, isn't it? Like, I think you need to stretch this question out in terms of are we talking like a day session? Or are we talking like, are we talking from when you actually physically leave the house at night? You know, like, say you're going out on the night time and where are we ending up? Because I think if you're having like a night out and you end up into like a, a nice bar or a club, I don't want to drink beer full stop. I might have a couple, but then you want to yeah. get on the shorts pretty quickly because it's too gassy and you feel a bit bloated. Yeah. Now, if you're out all day, I'd probably say I'd get onto the Guinness early and stick to Guinness throughout the day. I think that's fine. It's a bit smoother. Yeah. But, I don't know, like the footballs. Like I struggle now. I used to be able to drink bottles of beer when we were on away days and just sink pints. Like if I have about five or six, I just feel like bloated. I can't. I feel yeah, shit. I'm bloated. I, I can't do it anymore. Like in terms of just be able to like drink a crate of beer on the train or or whatever, you know something stupid like that. So it depends on the scene. If I went to the pub and like I knew we were just sitting in the pub from like about six o'clock, I could probably have six, seven beers. Yeah, I reckon max. But like, if you're out dancing and you know having a little party, and everything, <laughs> dancing, you gotta get you on the, go, you gotta get, I don't you know, know anywhere, man. yeah, like where, where, anywhere that's for, for the oldies. Did you ever um, go there, George? Nah. Cougars in Stourbridge before nah, it shut down. I've never, I've Chicago's. never had a night out. I've never had a night out. You know, in um, Stourbridge now, never. I used to go Chicago's with my mate all the time. Yeah, my mate got mate, one of my mates. He went to King Geds and he got filled in um, oh. after a night. In, in there. after, yeah, there uh, it was then, rough. Like, yeah. Just stopping like Yates is there in Wolverhampton, yeah. yeah. So he, he called called Yates. Rusty, too. Oh, yeah, South, South and Rusty. Yeah. <laughs> I was a Yates' Yates ultra as well when it, when it used to be open back in the day, yeah. So, yeah, we used to stick to Thursday nights in Wolverhampton to be fair back in the day. So, Not yeah, I've never had like a proper bash. night out, yeah. night out, out in a in the Stourbridge, but yeah, no, I no, think no. depending on back to the question, depending on. The environment and the scene. Let's just go with. Like, I'll go with. Five, yeah, let's say six pints if I'm in the pub for six hours. Pint an hour is fair. Okay, so the, the let me spin it. We're going to Birmingham for the early kickoff. 
Right. So we're into town for half 12. We'll have one before the game kicks off. And then we're going to watch all the games up until the eight o'clock kickoff. And we're just right. going to, and then we're going to get the last train home. How many points do you reckon? So, so we're going to a ground or we're just staying in a No, we're just going to, we're just going to watch it in a, in a uh, walkabout, for example. Yeah. Let's say we go to Hennessy's bar. Cause I've done that a few times. Hennessy's yeah. all the way through. And then we're having a, we're having a boogie in the, where are we going afterwards? No, just the last train home. Oh, just last, just train, last home. train home. Yeah, okay, start, so starting midday, get last train home. See, like, I'd probably, if I knew it was an all-day thing, I'd go on to Guinness and I could stick on Guinness. However, if I knew we were going out for, like, I don't know, maybe going into uh, Bacchus Bar or somewhere like that, I might, have, I might move on to the shorts a bit earlier on. But, <laughs> yeah, if I knew, if I was there for, no, it's tactical, it is tactical, I'm telling you, it's tactical. I, I would go, yeah. do one an hour, but as long as I eat as well. And maybe a couple of Pepsis in between. Fuck you, man. Aiton's chated. You know, when I went the f- last, only one and only time I went to that walkabout, I was thrown up all over the gaff. It was probably three or four years ago for my birthday. Yeah, uh, shit really. Yeah. What do you I, think, I, Matt, I, you reckon? I, don't, I know what, mate. You no, said, he's he's Dave, avoided the question. Yeah. And Dave, yeah. Dave will tell you I could fucking shovel beers down me, but I just can't anymore. I just get, I'm just I don't know, I just don't really enjoy drinking that much. Um I'll still have a good go at it, but I don't know, probably eight points on a Friday night, but I'll be pretty pissed. Like mm. I'd probably be sick in the night. Um <laughs> but, yeah. Probably say I'll probably say seven or eight points. I think anything more than you you your bordering nah. just not in your you like your face is feeling like furry. Yeah. You know, like your face starts to tingle. Yeah, yeah I'd yeah. I feel merry after about probably about four and a half. I reckon that's probably. I think three, four. I'm starting to feel like that sort of optimal level, and then anything after that is just like damage Session. limitation. It's horrible. I'll drink yeah. short. I'll drink shorts as well, and after a few beers, vodka, lime soda. Yeah, it's a way to go. It's the future. Drink champions. It is. It is. Just before we move <laughs> on to closing out, we we asked. We had a question last week about favourite crisps. And it caused quite a quite the controversy in the comments. So some of some of our listeners' favourite Chris, someone said flaming hot monster munch, lads. You a fan of those? Yeah, don't dislike them. Mm, not for me. They're all right. They're all right. Um, Bert's crisps. Anyone ever heard of them? Who from Devon? Apparently, who? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard. Of them. Uh, if they want to sponsor the pod, they can send up. A... <laughs> <laughs> we'll try, mate. Send a Bert's admin calendar for it. <laughs> Um, yeah, they are from Devon. They they look frighteningly similar to like almost kettle that chips. kind of tier. Of, yeah, kettle chips, Tyrrells, that kind That's of stuff. You know, and said Burt's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, Royster's got the respect it deserved, as I mentioned. Royster's T-bone steak, but also tomato snaps. I've not had snaps in years, but they're class. You, remember, you, no. you know where uh, Walkers used to do tomato ketchup flavor back in the oh, day. Oh, they were good, man. Yeah. They were good. I used to love them. Yeah. Snaps, man. Yeah, not had them in years. I used to love snaps. That's yeah. all we've got for this week, chaps. I've enjoyed that. I feel like we've uh, we, we've managed to speak speak about a lot. Just another reminder about the bet, mate. Pot. So it's three pound in for your chance to win two hundred and forty pound. Newcastle versus Wolves, capped at hundred players, and be gamble aware. Dave, where can people find you? Should they wish to follow you, mate? So it's at Dave as a party everywhere: Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. George, where can people find you? I saw that you were uh, you back on LinkedIn with the with the posts. I'm enjoying them. Yeah, you've enjoyed yeah. them, have you? Yeah, you've really you enjoying yeah. them. No, yeah, I, I told you it's all about the algorithm. You put something out there and you put the content oh, in. You know, you don't have be... post some short. <laughs> mate, I should be doing your job, mate. To be fair, I might. I'm just hit it now. Mark, the job of home, sir. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, look what I can do. Um, yeah, so George was seven. Twitter, Instagram. And of course, on the world famous LinkedIn. Yeah. Mate, your you, picture you on LinkedIn look... is jokes, you to be fair. No, honestly, <laughs> How old is that yeah, picture? You, yeah, that photo, yeah, he's like um, pre. <laughs> I reckon it's about it was when I was in the bank, so it's about six years ago that photo. Yeah, I was gonna say, you look well different, man. Yeah, as well as going yeah, to the you... gym and single. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably yeah, the facial hair, actually, I think. Yeah, it is the facial hair, to be fair. Yeah. I think you look better now, mate. Thank you, mate. I appreciate that. Not level south all then today, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we uh, for for some for some reason Jord has got a nickname for me, and I don't really know why because we you know. We, we, well, we, we, I'll call you Neville Southall now and again, don't I? And I don't know where it's I don't yeah. know where it's come from. <laughs> 
<laughs> I've got no idea where it's come from. Oh no, but to be fair, I, I, I did appreciate the comment section the other week when someone said a lot of Danny Ings. Yeah. So I told my missus, oh, I look like Danny Ings apparently. She told me to fuck off. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. No. I don't. He, he said it was from the side. Can we just have a look at it from the side? Uh, I don't see it. Other than the face, there a little bit. Yeah. Nah, it ain't. It's me. There you go. And how about from behind? Let's have a look there. See if we can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can, you can check that out. Yeah, you can check that out. My only fans. <laughs> he does a lot. Never say fall from behind. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm M Cooper Wrights on Twitter, Matt Cooper Boyd's on Twitter and YouTube and TikTok. We are at Talking Walls across all of our socials, including LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, let us, how many, let us know how many points you can sink on a night out um, with our stipulation of the, the day session time finishing with the 8pm kickoff. But if you have enjoyed it, drop us a like. Uh, if you're new here, subscribe. And until next time, take care.